recording there, and then I will just be a minute or so. I'm looking for something to talk about, same as per usual. Oh, I say that same as per usual. That doesn't make sense because I never had a session with you. My apologies. <laughs> no worries. And for YouTube, I have congestion because I have a cold. Regen burst activated. Get in here. Alrighty, so rewatch this for a second. Watch, you know, standing still to when people are shooting at you. Watch the Fara, make sure she's not shooting rockets at you, because that's, you know, you can, we can dodge that damage if we're, if we're just keeping an eye on her. Um, now, here we have our, uh, let's see, we have, we have our Ash, who ends up dying because we, we don't see her. Um, we end up taking that damage. So really, that we, we're probably able to save Ash if we don't stand still, right? You can kind of see how those like tiny little mistakes can can lead to bigger mistakes um, in certain situations. Like here, a death happens because we stood still for a second and we weren't paying attention. Uh, whereas if we weren't standing still and we were paying attention to Farah, well then we're we don't take damage. We don't have to back up. We can just you know it, we can peek re-peek for the ash or we can back up this way and still see ash so we have a lot more options there i should try to see try to see all the all of the my teammates yes you should definitely try to have as many teammates in your line of sight whenever possible not an end-all be-all people are off in narnia on the flank but if you know, whenever possible, you want to have as many people as possible in your in your line of sight. Okay, so let's rewatch this for half a second. All right, we're gonna go back through this. So notice here how we. First, firstly, we misuse our shift a little bit here. So, shift usage, um, three primary uses that you can get out of it. Firstly, self healing. Right, you can use it for yourself. It's a very easy way to heal yourself. It heals you you more than it heals your teammates, pretty much. Right, mm -hmm. it's healing you just, like at twice the rate. Okay, you can also use it on like when you need just big team wide healing. Right, just everyone around you needs healing, so you pop it. You can also use it when you're trying to burst heal somebody, because then you get multiple sources of healing. It itself is not burst healing because it's not a instant heal but it does allow you when somebody is low to heal them up faster than otherwise would be allowed right because you're getting extra healing um here for example when reinhardt's in danger you probably want to be you know he's critical hp this would probably be a situation where we could push up a, a hair pop a shift on him so that he is able to get a little bit of extra healing when he's in in this situation where he's a little bit more in danger right now, we do use it here in a moment. We use it, like, here after Reinhardt's dead. And notice how when we use it, right, we can take a look at our surroundings. Okay. And you can take maybe look at top left at the, at the team's health bars and whatnot. And there's an issue because not really anybody needs healing, right? And we're, and we're pressing the ability. So, you know, we use it when people need healing when... Oh, like I said, there's like kind of those main three, and there's some also other ti other tinier times where we can use it. Um, so that's one thing here. Another thing is a little bit of our healing. Uh, here we end up trying to heal Reinhardt, and we shoot a couple shots at him while he's purpled, and we are incapable of healing him. That's going to last four seconds, and we attempt to heal him immediately after he gets purpled, right? So he gets purpled here. That, you know, our Reinhardt, and then we heal, and we heal, and we heal, and we heal, and we heal. we're trying to heal him, but he's purple, we're not going to be able to heal him, so at that point, that's what you call overhealing, it's attempting to heal somebody who, A, is either already full HP, in which case it does absolutely nothing, B, is purple, and another, again, does absolutely nothing, three, uh, or sorry, C, 
if they are very very close to full HP, so they're you know they're just down like 30 HP or something like that, and we're trying to heal them up, and it's close to worthless with the with what we're doing. It wastes our time, it wastes our ammo, and it means that now you know maybe so we're at three bullets, and somebody's actually critical and needs healing, and we don't have any bullets left. So overhealing uh, is a problem because often. You, it's not a problem in small doses, but often when it comes up, it, it has the possibility to be a repeat habit that continues through your gameplay. And especially with Baptiste and Mercy players, I've had, uh, you know, I've had Bap and Mercy players who have gone like 14 seconds of fight over healing, and it's really, you know, and it's really, really terrible for them. So, um, not saying that's the case here. Just saying, keep your eye on over healing because mm -hmm. we're doing some over healing here, um, and then. When you see some, you know, when you see people are full HP, you see okay, Zarya look, you know, look top left. Zarya is down fifty HP, right? Um, you would you just say okay, is fifty HP worth a shot? Well, maybe, but is there anything else that I could be doing? Right? Maybe reloading is is in that situation is is going to get you more value. Maybe sh you know healing somebody else who needs healing. Maybe shooting, left clicking. Right? Those are probably going to be your main three. Right? Look around for somebody else to heal. Reload, shoot, and then you have some other ones like use your abilities and use you know look around your at your surroundings, be aware of your surroundings, things like that. But it's just other things that you can do with that time rather than healing. So here we we can see a lot of overheal shots. So one two three overheal shots okay and then we can look at and that's four overheal shots and then we can look at these guys right and, and we see all their health bars are full and we go five overheal shots okay and then that one maybe if we tar if it went to zarya that would have been fine so it's five overheal shots there shift gets wasted right so all that right and then yeah that, that looks like about it right seven uh yeah seven overheal shots eight nine right we're just kind of spamming it in there so mm -hmm. that's just I'm just giving the the you know walking you through it so you can see that happening. It's just something that not, doesn't want to re be repeated. Uh, does that all make sense? Any questions on that? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Alrighty, so let's continue. And I I also think that that will help you as well when you're managing your left click versus right click usage. When should you heal? When should you damage? You should be healing when healing is needed, and when healing is not needed, that is when you damage. Earlier, I, we don't have to go back to it, because we'll see it as mm -hmm. it comes up here, but earlier I was maybe noticing where we were damaging when people needed healing, when it should be the opposite, right? We're healing when people need healing, and then we're damaging when people don't, and then here we should be damaging, but we're trying to heal people who don't need healing, right? So that all ties back to watch health bars, because that dictates wh which you should be doing, right? Be aware of the health bars. Yeah, the problem is that uh, I need to see them, <laughs> to see their health bars. It's I would like to have, like, yeah, this view. This view would be amazing during the game. Uh, are you running a setting where health bars are not visible to you? No, no, they are visible, right? But the the one on the top, oh, like, the team top one, left, team okay. two. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, yeah, uh, that's helpful. You know, but it's also it's it's training yourself to be aware and looking at them. A lot of the times when we're overhealing here, right? We went back to here. The the health bars are on our screen, right? They're right yeah. there, right? And it's just and it's that would probably be easier than looking at the top left, right? It'd be easier to just look ahead right here and see, oh, everyone's full HP. Let me not heal. Then it would be to glance at the top left. Top left is certainly handy. And we can see when people are on our screen, but a lot of these scenarios, you know, what's in front of us is is probably sub is enough. It's 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 substantial. Right there, you know, it's fine, perfectly fine place to be damaging. Yeah, is the positioning okay in here? Um, we're maybe a little bit. Uh, a little bit to the right where we can't really see a, a ton if we're looking to damage you probably want to peek out a little bit so that you're able to actually see to damage we're like we're trying to shoot but we're like giving ourselves an angle like this right so if you're if you're damaging go like this if you're healing then you know why stand here where they can shoot us go like this right where they can't see you any longer we're kind of in the middle 
where we're giving our, we're trying to damage, but we're giving ourselves like no visibility at all. Right. Besides that, I think positioning is perfectly fine right now. It's a you're in a generally good spot. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if I maybe should be on the other side in inside that building, right? Um, no, I think that that right side is fine because it get all over on this left side. It makes it easier for them to push you. Um, you kind of have to, and then you have to back off and then notice if they push you into this room, you have to back off. Then you have to do, you can't see your team for this long period of time as you're wrapping around. Whereas over here, you can see your team like the entire time, even if you have to back up, it gives you some more room to back up with. Um, and then it also, yeah, that, that's probably the, the big thing. It's a little bit closer to them over here, closer to the enemies and it makes it e less backup room, gives them easier time of pushing you. All right, so here we end up getting a little bit far back. Farah boops us. We're already a little, we're already a hair back. Farah boops us. Our team pushes forwards. We keep walking back a little bit, unfortunately, right? And then now our team's all the way up there. And as we were saying before, we want to be able to see as many teammates as possible at all times. And this is where that comes into play because these guys get shattered, and we don't have line of sight on them now. They are purple, so we wouldn't be able to do anything anyways. What's the like the thing we could be doing at the moment? Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. The in immortality field. Yeah, immortality field. It comes a little bit late because we should be throwing it at like now, right? We should just be like snap, snap, right? It should be looking to throw it. And that might be a little bit on reaction times, which is something that is improved yeah. upon over time and whatnot. That's not... That's not something that we have to go to in depth intellectually on but here we're delayed with it maybe we want to be throwing that faster and then it wants to be when we are throwing it we want it to be going to the people forwards not the people in the back because the people forwards are the ones who are much more in danger so here if we're looking to throw it right our i think by the time we throw it they're already dead but how we should be angling it we should be angling a little bit up right because we throw it like really low here Okay, and then here we don't back up far enough for Reinhardt. We see Nano Reinhardt running at us, and we're a little bit slow to start running away. Right, we let him get before we actually start backing up. We let him get within his swing range. Right, so stay away from you know Nano Reinhardt. <laughs> uh, j you can jump away as well as another option. But here we don't we don't attempt to run away until he's already on top of us, pretty much. Yeah. I just probably I should have just you know turn around and start running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again. At that point, it's either get out or let them kill you faster. At that point. Yeah, I have a problem. You know, when to recognize I mean, to recognize when to disengage and just run yeah. away. Uh, would you? Uh, yeah, we can go on that on a more macro scale. Would you like to talk about how to tell whether or not you've won or lost a fight? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I. Yeah, I have a problem with you know, uh, watching the kill feed. So mm. if I don't see it in front of me that our tank is dead, yeah, I I <laughs> I need some time to uh, usually yeah. to to you know notice that uh, and at that time i'm probably too too yeah. slow to understand that we already lost and yeah yeah so let's talk about kill feed for a minute so when it comes to telling how you know have you won or lost the fight there's you can, we can get more advanced with it the basics is like you mentioned kill feed and it is basically when you are up one to two people or down one to two people that is an advantage or a disadvantage when you are, and then in those cases, you play either more aggressive or more passive. When you are up or down two to three people, that is a one or a lost fight. In which case you, you know, in one fight you get extra aggressive or in a lost fight, you get out if you can. Or if you can't, you let them kill you um, if you're unable to escape. Okay, so in the scenario where Reinhardt, you know, they, they killed two of your teammates that was a scenario scenario where you were at a disadvantage. You were in a situation where the fight wasn't lost yet, per se, but you wanted to play passive. You wanted to back out. Um, 
But in that second scenario, where, right here, where we're coming out of spawn and we're respawning, if we're watching kill feed, or if we just look ahead, right? We just look in front of, you know, we can see, we have a ton mm. of different sources. We see kill feed. We see the fact that we, we can see how many teammates we have in front of us. We can see the fact that people died in front of us. We can hear the fact that people died in front of us. And we see right now that it is currently a 3v6. 3v6, lost fight, get out, right? If you can't, you let them kill you. That's the basics. Now, application. It seems as though you're saying, okay, I get I need to watch kill feed. I get that, you know, that impacts whether or not you know, being up or down people impacts it, but I struggle to pay attention to kill feed. So let's discuss how do you pay attention to kill feed better, okay? You, when it comes to working on anything that you try to work on, in-game or out-of-game, you work on it, you get better at it by making sure that you intentionally focus upon it while you play. So what that looks like, is it means that you're not going to autopilot when you play. You're not going to just play to play. You're, contrary to popular belief, not going to purely play to win, is that just leads to stagnation, whereas what you want to do is play to improve, and that leads to more wins. Now, what that actually looks like within your gameplay is you are going to come into a game and you're going to think to yourself, Kill feed, kill feed, kill feed, kill feed, kill feed, kill feed, kill feed. Awareness, 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 right? And you're giving yourself a constant stream of reminders to look at kill feed and to be aware of your surroundings, right? Now, if you're going through your gameplay and you're autopiloting, it's, you're not paying attention. If you are actively reminding yourself to look at kill feed, you will probably look at kill feed a little bit more, right? I, I think that's a reasonable thing to say. You're probably going to be looking at kill feed a little bit more. Right, And therefore, your awareness is going to be better when you do this for a long enough period of time that will form it as a positive habit. Once it forms it as a positive habit, you no longer need to put as much intent focus because it comes a lot more natural now and you can move on to something else. And I would also recommend don't try to do everything all at once that we're talking about because we have a lot of things to go over. Um, instead, yeah. pick a category or one to three smaller things within a category. Does that all make sense? Any questions on any of that? Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Alrighty. So, um, and the other thing to note is that you don't have to be glued to kill feed 24-7. You look at yeah, kill feed when stuff happens in kill feed, right? Use your, it's, it's using your peripheral vision. Now, if you're trying to get used to looking at it, feel free to overcompensate, right? You're trying to get into the habit of looking at it. So you want to overcompensate a little bit and go and look at it, even sometimes when you don't need to. But generally speaking, when you get good at it, you're not going to be glued to the kill feed. You look at it when you see stuff moving, when you see, you know, be blank. And then all of a sudden you'll see, you know, in the top right corner of the screen, you'll see stuff come down. And then that's where you glance at it. And then that's where you take in the information. Or you can glance at it even after you see people die on your screen, right? That sort of idea. Okay. Okay, um, here, maybe not needed, right, just the only one who needs healing a soldier, just so you're aware of it, you're, you're, I'm not sure who we're trying to reach with it, but your radius on your shift is 10 meters, so for example, Reinhardt would be outside of that right now, um, so just be aware of that, that radius that you're working with. Okay, noting, we will discuss it probably after you use it, or if we're going to run out of time, but currently noting that you haven't used your ultimate, and it's probably, this is reaching two fights now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Alright, so, couple things here. Firstly, you see Genji going for blade. Uh, one thing I would note, is that I have not seen you do a uh, super jump yet. Um, this yeah. is probably something that you're going to want to use a lot more. It is, yeah, I keep forgetting uh, about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's going to be, for example here, right? What happens if you just have a, you, you think, okay, 
It, I haven't seen a blade yet. Spend three minutes. Okay. Geji probably has blade. So you have a shift. You know, sorry, not a shift. Your, uh, your crouch or right? your control. You have a control charged up, ready to go. Genji jumps you. What happens? Uh, so what do you think he'll, uh, you know, turn on his uh, ultimate on me? Oh well, right now he's turning his ultimate on you, right? Yeah. He, he he comes in ulti. What what happens if you have a shift charge up right now? I would jump. <laughs> you would jump, and then the result would be. I I was focusing here on you know I've. I think I've heard the, the the ultimate, so I instantly tried to run with the immortality field. I didn't think of myself, I guess. Yeah. Well, make sure you do think of yourself, because you're the one, you know, he, he's probably going to be looking to focus, um, mm. or you, you, your back line. Um, so once again, this is a little bit of awareness, because you see him dash up towards you, above you. That usually when Genji dashes straight up in the air, expect that to be a blade, right, or something of that sort. Um, so that's, again, once again, a little bit of awareness, um, audio awareness here as well. He dashes straight at us, and then it's after we see him damage us, we throw it forwards, right, is, is an issue here. Mm -hmm. um, so if we have Crouch charged up already, Genji dashes at us, and we just leap up, and then Genji, what is Genji going to do? Right, we jump up to the high ground. Okay, he has to what run and chase us down, and that's really is going to mess with his blade. That's going to mean that he loses the dash reset. He's gonna to have to chase us down. He's going to be super delayed. It gives our team more time to run away, more time to shoot him. Right, it's gonna mess with it. Okay, additionally, we also mess up the immortality because we throw it at the wrong people. We sh it should be personal here. We throw it at our team. You're fully here. <laughs> All better. Now. Yeah, and I missed. <laughs> okay. You missed what? I missed with the immortality field. It should be far, you know, more forward, I guess. Uh, w why, do you I... think, why do you think it needs to be more forwards? Because they are there. I don't know if it was, you know, catching the Reinhardt. The the reason why you can know that it's catching the Reinhardt is because of the indent on his okay. on his health bar there. So notice how these guys do not have that. You can see the the ring here. You have mm -hmm. it. Soldier has it. Reinhardt has it. So it is within range. Reinhardt is within range here. Um, so that's a per you know perfectly fine immortality to have here. Uh, my issue is look mm -hmm. at Reinhardt's health bar. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I'm yeah. you know this game I was more panicking <laughs> and just just trying to keep them keep them alive was yeah. So yeah, probably right, if we're if we're going through that, if you see because a lot of times if you if they grab immortality will be needed really fast, but if it's just one single Reinhardt and you see his full HP and you see he's got a bubble and you know that you guys can all heal him up. Uh, consider thinking, you know, waiting, seeing, okay, does he actually get in more danger? Does he get lower health, right? Watch his health bar, watch his danger level. We can go into danger maybe in a little bit, or why don't we go into danger now, right? Um, I can be one HP and back here and be perfectly safe. And I can be full HP in the middle of a grab, or, you know, in the middle of a grab and be in danger. Or I can be full HP in the middle of a grab and be completely safe, right? There is our danger levels. They're not always, it, 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 being low HP is not indicative of danger, though it usually does affect your danger level. Uh, Reinhardt, in that situation, was in a decent bit of danger, but he was not in immediate danger to where he needed the immortality field, right? He was in enough danger to where you're going, do I need it? Do I need to use immortality field? But he was not in enough danger to where the immortality field is warranted. In which case, you probably could have held on to it and then now used it for somebody else who was in danger. Uh, and then that's because they never comboed it with a second ultimate. You had bubble, you had healing, he was full HP. If uh, and he also had all of his shield, right? So all these factors feed into the fact that he got out of it and he's full HP still, he's perfectly fine. 
Uh, does that all make sense and why in that situation we probably didn't even need to use it? So uh, if you see that it's not like imme if Grav's not immediately being comboed with a big ultimate or it's not, you know, or you see that your teammates are doing just okay, consider waiting it out. Immortality is not needed in any and all graphs. That, that makes sense? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Once again, notice how we're delayed to run away, right? So R Nano Reinhardt charges at us, okay? We don't start running until once again, he's pretty much inside of our swing range, right? So this is a little bit of awareness, right? Paying attention to our surroundings. Reinhardt's on top of us. Watching, keeping our eyes on the screen, looking around. Uh, and then also just make sure you're learning from your past mistakes, right? Running sooner rather than later. Okay, so here, Reinhardt's on top of us. Uh, there yeah, is... I know, I know the grenade. <laughs> you Say that again? No, I, I threw a grenade at him. <laughs> oh, no, that's that's all good. That's not... I mean, that you know, that's a, that's a thing. That's not a big... Not a big deal. We're trying to escape him, okay? Yeah. Is running off to this this right side going to be, like, a great way to escape him? What's maybe the... In this scenario, right? What's maybe the best way that you can escape the Reinhardt? Yeah, I wanted to jump up. <laughs> yeah, jump, jumping up. I think it's a good idea. Yep. I think charging up a jump would be a good idea. We're a little bit delayed on it. Yeah, exactly. Uh-oh. Uh, yep. Pretty much it. Just to check, because I'm not, you know, sometimes I think bat players think, you, you know that, you, that your uh, right click doesn't heal you, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just, just checking. Some some players are like, <laughs> what, really? Now only shift, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so. We'll talk about it in a minute. Okay, so wasted shift again there. Yeah, I, I didn't, I, yeah, I should have. Jump it. I didn't, you know, probably I didn't charge the, the crouch. Oh, shift is in your your healing. Oh, yeah. Crou sorry. Crouch, sorry. The, it, it's, it becomes difficult to remember. Crou it, control is the is the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the, t is the uh, standard crouch button. Uh, not sure if you've changed that or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, do, 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 do. So here, there's a Farah directly above us, and we do not. We seem to be oblivious to the fact that she's there. Yeah. Right. Uh. So in the replay, I will give you some benefit of the doubt because I typically play with like lower volume or play it back with a lower volume so that I'm able to hear myself talk. Uh. But sure. when you're playing, hopefully, you know, we'll go over some sound settings here. Firstly, make sure your volume is loud enough. This is going to be different per person because everybody has different uh, system audio sounds, right? So make sure it's loud enough to where you can actually hear it. Uh, music volume, I'd recommend turning off or down because it can clutter with your in-game audio. And then finally, uh, make sure that you go and check if you have surround sound enabled on your PC. And if it is not an option, go in-game and turn on Dolby Atmos for headphones, which is the in-game version of that. Uh, and then you could have all those settings be good and still have terrible audio awareness if, once again, you are not actively being aware of your surroundings, not actively paying attention to uh, you know, w listening for footsteps and gunshots and abilities and ultimates. Uh, you know, here we can, if we're paying attention, we can hear her, f her flying. We can hear her shooting, her going pow, pow, bang, bang. We can hear soldier dying behind us to Genji, right? Um, we can hear rockets, right? We can hear Hanzo dying behind us to rockets. Uh, so if you're keeping our ears open, we'll be able to recognize that, turn around, heal them, shoot a Farah, use immortality, right? Because their whole team's kind of falling apart to that. Yeah, I need to check the the Dolby. I know I uh, I was tr fighting with this on the yeah when I was playing PUBG. Yeah. But uh, I wasn't really yeah I wasn't re realized I didn't realize that it's uh, you know I think here also. Yeah, it's it's you you should if possible. Uh, I'm not sure if you it, it usually comes with headset software. So if you have a brand name headset. 
and not like just yeah, a, I, yeah. I have a steel series or something yeah, steel, yeah steel steel series. Series. so if you have steel series software and if you don't then that's probably something you can go and download a lot of them i'm not i'm unfamiliar with steel series software but um a lot of them you're going to be able to go in and enable the full system wide surround sound so that's out of game surround sound which is what i have but if that's not an option for Steel Series, then you can go in game and enable the in game one. Where is it? In game? Yeah, in game it's options, sound, Dolby Atmos for headphones, the bottom of the oh, first half, one. top. Okay, I'll try it. Oh, let's we'll see. Give me the. There we go. All right, so this is now fight number five since we have had Bapple that we have used Bapple in. So let's discuss that. Uh, hopefully that sounded bad when you heard that, and I'm going to make it sound even worse. <laughs> um, yeah, I realized since how yeah. fast it charges, so it's uh, I probably should have used it like every second fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or but yeah. Where, where to put it? That that's the question. Also. Yeah, we we can discuss where to put it in a, in a second. But firstly, let's just discuss the when to use it, and that is you should be pretty much for the most part, with exceptions, be using it every fight that you get it, right? Uh, and in this time frame, if we use it every single fight that we get it, in the time we use one single ultimate, we could be using three to five ultimates, right? So that's. Three to five times the probably even more than that because usually the quantity even adds up because then you get fa other factors that come into it like you start snowball effect you stop their momentum you waste their time you're probably getting upwards of five times the value in comparison to what we've used right think about that that's an insane amount of value we could be getting just by pressing Q. Doesn't matter where you place it, just by pressing the button, right? So, ultimates that are not used do absolutely nothing. They don't do nada, and you don't get value out of them. But when you do use them, you immediately start charging up the next one, and you're able to use multiple, right? So, press Q more frequently. When it comes to the timing of when you should be using your ultimate, you should be looking to ult. Every fight that you get it for the most part, not that doesn't also doesn't apply to every ultimate for the for, but for Apple it does. And you should be looking to use it at the start of the fight, not before the fight starts, be at the start of the fight. That's the most preferable time. Mid fight is okay. Late fight is situational, and then in between fights, including the end or the or the you know, before the fight starts, that is going to be very, very rare when you would want to use it there. Okay. So that's with the timing of it and all of that, right? So we preferably should have used it a ton by now. Now, uh, where should you be placing it? You should preferably, you know, for most of them, you're going to try to put it ahead of your team. I think that in this scenario, right, we, we pull it out, we place it right here. I think that was fine because you're, you're, you, you see they're backing off, right? So we place it, we place it up here. I think that this is okay placement if you're looking for placement, right? You're looking to use it where where your team is behind it, the enemy team is in front of it, and preferably they do not you have good visibility on them and they don't have cover. Cover is the easiest counter to your ultimate that every single character in the game has, right? You if you ult and their entire team is right here, and you ult right there, then they go like that, your ultimate's instantly useless, right? But if you ult when their entire team is right here, well, then they have to run all the way over here, and in that time, you just melted them, right? Um, now, ult timing, okay, getting back to, so here, we're using it. I think that it's good that you're pressing the button. I would rather see you press the button and get a little tiny bit of value out of it than never press the button and get no value. Right, I would rather see a bad usage than no usage, and then that leads to you being able to practice it more when you use it more as well. Right, which is another thing as well. Um, here, uh, 
we're using it, but the issue is that we're like kind of. It's maybe not even a great scenario for it. In this scenario, you probably should have either used it earlier, or honestly, this might be a fight where you can just hold on to it. As of the moment, you have a pretty decently big advantage. You're up a player. You have close spawns. Uh, they're all spread across the map. If you ult here, you're only killing Mercy, and that's it. Right? Like, what you, you get one kill out of it is, you know, a lot of times, one kill with your ult isn't worth it. You probably want to be ambitious and aim. Two is, like, two, two people should probably be the minimum in most cases. And that you're probably aiming more for, like, three plus when it comes to how many people can you see and kill with it. Uh, that's the goal. So here we're using it, and we're only using it on one single person. Therefore, probably want to not be using it or so. Yep. Pretty much. Awareness of surroundings where we don't notice the Genji's behind us. We're sl we don't hear that he blades. Immortality, feel for yourself if we do. Or leap away, right, as options. And just to check, uh, all makes sense. Any questions on any of that old usage stuff? Oh, makes sense. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, crap. Give me a second. I okay. need to go to my child. All good. Okay, back. Alrighty. Let's uh, continue here then for a couple more minutes until we get to the uh, wrap up. Have you considered right. a different line of work? A little bit far from our team to start. Recommend. There's a couple times where we drag our tails to push. Have you considered I'd recommend stay at a close range to your team if possible because your whole kit revolves around being close to your team your shift is 10 meters that's a close range your uh, immortality and right click are projectiles projectiles are inherently more difficult to land at ranges as people move around and then additionally it's going to have a delay before they actually receive immortality and healing the further away you get Additionally, it's also just going to make it more difficult to use your ultimate for your team. So all of that to say, here we're lagging behind a little bit. You can just be up on that corner um, rather than all the way back here. Just simple. Now we do push up, so it's not massive. Okay, here Reinhardt gets absolutely shredded. That's not going to happen in Overwatch 2. <laughs> yeah, probably there was, I don't know. If there was something I could do for him, probably um, not. 
I possibly I would say reaction times would be the biggest thing there. We're not going to focus mm. too much on that. There's you know there's as you've already seen there's all that's a little bit of a more difficult thing. If I was working with like a you know master's GM player, maybe we'd discuss that, but um, or a diamond player, but that's not that's too big of an issue for the moment. <laughs> Someone is above me. Yeah, Genji. Yep. There you go. Right. Uh, watch your health bar. Right. So, thinking, am are you in actively in danger? I would probably answer no, not particularly. Right. Comparing your health bar to Genji's health bar. If you, rather than immortality, immortalying. If you just continue to look at him, you probably kill him in one more clip or one more, you know, one more burst. Uh, you have your teammates with you. Probably not a danger situation where you need to be immortaliating. Immortaliating. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And that just saves it from when it's actually needed. Okay. Yeah, again, I couldn't see him and he just died. Yeah, like. so here possibly could be pushed up slightly because he's making some space for us. We can maybe be pushed up. We could possibly be on top of a cart here because they don't... Um, uh, yeah, we could be on top of a cart. We could be here. Honestly, you could really do any of the options. Um, we can also... Just make sure that you're actively paying attention to him, immortality him, and then, yeah, that's, that's mainly it. Just pay attention, be aware, be ready. Immortality there, you know, would have helped if we had it. Alright, um, we're going to do a quick review over everything we just went over, and then go over the main points, and then wrap up from there. So we just spent the whole time going over BAP. Okay, BAP, shift usage, three main uses, right? You need healing, group healing, burst healing, right? Three more main times. Uh, immortality usage, right? Watch danger level of teammates. Sometimes we were throwing it when people weren't necessarily in danger. Um, and then other times we were kind of slow to throw when people were at in active danger, right? So looking to get effort out of that. Immortality is a very big... Um, ability, it's probably close to being equivalent to an ultimate, right? It has that power level when used correctly. So make sure you're putting effort into how you're using that. And, and what, you know, like I said, you're looking to put effort into the one that needs the most, but immortality is something that gets a lot of value. So just make sure you're thinking of it in that sense and you want to be making sure you're using it correctly. Whereas when, in our usage, we did throw it out a lot more than our, uh, than our window. But it didn't always really get value. So overall, I would say it's an ability such as a medium priority for you to work on. Um, ult usage, right? Use it, press the button, press Q, ults that aren't used, don't do nothing. You're going to get a lot more value if you just press the button. And now you need to go past just pressing the button. You need to press it at the right time. And you need to also press it in the right way, right? Make sure that when you're using it that the enemy team is in front of you. Um, and that your team is in front, is behind the window, and that people are generally out in the open. You don't want them all in cover over there because then they can just run away, right? And then also, uh, timing wise, right, you're using it, you don't use it in one or lost fights. You use it at the start of the fight. Mid fight's okay, late fight is situational, in between fights is rare. Okay, overall, ability or ultimate usage was a lower end of a medium high it is really important i would in importance level it's probably really up there but it should hopefully be a little bit of an easier thing to implement just pre the, the big thing just being press the button right that should hopefully be on on everything out of everything we're talking about hopefully should be one of the easier implementations um moving on so you have mechanics. Mechanics, we discussed. Don't overheal. That one, unfortunately, I did not see repeat incredibly frequently. Right? We saw, I, I saw a little bit of it, but not enough to where it was like all the time, which is good. Just watch over healing. Right? Don't heal when people are purple and people don't need it. Uh, make sure you're healing when healing is. Pr put the priority in perspective. Heal when healing is needed. 
damage when healing is not needed, right? Um, besides that, mechanics, I think that's about it with mechanics. Generally, practice that mechanics. Uh, don't know how much time. We, we don't have to go super. Talk about this a ton. When it, I think general practice the mechanics could be useful, but um, we don't have to go with none of that now. I don't know if we have enough time to. Um, moving, and then overall, that probably goes like a low to medium priority for you to work on. Okay. Moving on is your positioning. Positioning stand a little bit closer to your team. Uh, you know, if you're trying to shoot at them, make sure that the enemy team is visible. And then if you're not, if you're healing your team, make sure they're not visible. And then uh, besides that, you know, generally use cover. Some situations take high ground. Um, overall, not super big. I'd say low to medium priority positioning wise. Uh, also, one other thing with abilities is actually use your shift, right? It's, a, it's very, very easy. It's a passive. You have active all the time. You just press your your, your control button. Sorry, I meant to say control. Mm -hmm. You press your control, yeah. charge it up. You're all good to go. Um, that one, hopefully, once again, should be a little bit easier of implementation because it's just press the button, right? Uh, then, and then that gets you in the habit of using it. And then after you start pressing it, then we can actually discuss, like, how you should press it better, right? Um... Moving on to finally awareness. Awareness, pay attention to your health bar. Request healing when you're low. Pay attention to your danger level. What is your team's health bar? What is their danger level? Pay attention to the kill feed. What is happening in there, right? Who's up, who's down? One to two is an advantage or disadvantage, in which case you play more aggro or passive. Two to three is a one or lost fight, in which case you play... Uh, or in which case you play super aggro or you get out if you can or you let them kill you if it's lost and then you also don't look to use ults in one or lost fights um, and then besides that generally pay attention to your surroundings right don't don't wander around tunnel visioned on the center of your crosshair just doing very slow pans across the map you want to be looking around look at the corners pay attention to your peripherals look left look right do a quick 360 once in a while to check your surroundings Keep your ears open, right? Listen for footsteps, gunshots, yeah. abilities, ultimates. And then, yeah, that's a lot of just general here and there things, right? Overall, that one probably went to a medium high priority for you to work on. There's a lot of stuff that fell within that category. The I would say that the ult usage maybe was a tad higher, but a tad easier to implement. Okay, uh, So to put that all in order... Number one is awareness. Two is ult usage. Three is going to be your uh, ability usage. Four is going to be your... Probably your mechanics. And then five is positioning. Any questions? Yeah, I should have made notes. <laughs> um, all good. This is recorded. So Also, oh, you okay. ordered the notes. So I will be getting you notes in about... Um, uh, I'll get you your recording in five minutes and then your notes in 10 to 15 minutes. So, ah, yep. Okay. Ah, I forget then I did that. <laughs> then it's all good. All right. Any other questions? Well, you tried your best. Yeah, so I guess, uh, yeah, I need to play some more and probably, I don't know, next week or something, I'll reach out for the next session, right? Or okay. week or two, something um, like that. Sure. Let me stop.